Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Stumble98, and welcome to the first of what will probably be many tutorials on the Sonic Project 06 Silver release. This first video is basically just going to cover how to set up Sonic Project 06 for speedrunning. And then later this week, uh, because of all the internet issues, if you haven't checked my community post, I posted it yesterday. Be sure to check that out. Uh, I'm going to have a bunch of pre-recorded beginner tutorials on how to speedrun Sonic Project 06, starting with Silver Story. But this video in particular is just going to cover how to set the game up, how to change your save file, uh, how to troubleshoot graphic settings if you've been having some graphic setting issues and all that. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Getting right into this, this is the Sonic Project 06 speedrunning database. I will have a link in the description down below in order for you uh, to access it yourself so the first page here is just of course a welcome and all of our lovely sonic b06 speedrunning staff uh what you can find here is the important links most importantly probably the download for the silver release the speedrun.com page which has all the leaderboards and everything for sonic project 06 and then very importantly as well the sonic p06 speedrunning discord um, even if you are in my Discord, I highly, highly recommend joining this Discord, uh, where there's a bunch of Sonic P06 discourse, um, where you can post your, your new personal best or your new world records. And, uh, if you find any new glitches or anything like that, uh, accessing this Discord is very, very good. Additionally, if you're interested in speedrunning Retail 06, both of the games are, are merged together into one server, which is really, really cool. Finally, down here we have our save files, which we'll be getting back to later. On the next tab, uh, currently, obviously, this database is in development. Silver release has been out for less than two weeks, so we got a lot of work ahead of us in order to get all the resources available for you guys. On this overview, uh, we are going to have... Uh, Upgrade locations, there's going to be a link to this video right here, a little bit meta. And then movement tutorials once those are made. Not everything that is going to be in this database is going to be by me. The other members of the Sonic PO6 speedrunning staff are very good at this game and extremely knowledgeable in it. Probably more than I am. Um, in fact, I'd say almost guaranteed more than I am. So you will also see their videos and their content as well in here, especially when we get down to the movement tutorials and the stage routing. Next year will be the beginner stage routing. Currently, Gordon Ramsay, uh, the, sh the speedrunner, not the chef, made an entire silver kind of beginner tutorial. Like if you're brand new to speedrunning and you kind of want to go fast, you can check it out all right here. You can pick the stage. And what I did on the right side here is these are kind of like the times to beat. So if you want to try your hand at a stage, you have a bit of a goal there on the time that you want to beat. These are subject to change. I haven't fully figured out what exactly like a beginner stage route would be. So, or a route for a beginner would be. So we'll do that there. Next is advanced stage routes. No holds barred. You've played the beginner routes a million times. It's time to, you know, kick your butt into gear. Uh, and that's what this page is going to be as well. And then finally, if you have a suggestion, please let me know. But you can put your suggestion here. And if you want to, you can put your Discord username there. That way I can properly credit those who uh, helped with suggestions and that kind of stuff. So that is the Project 06 speedrunning database. If you're at all interested in speedrunning Project 06, have this thing bookmarked uh, because hopefully, eventually, it will be really useful. Okay, so moving on here into the first thing I want to talk about, which is downloading Project 06. So if you go to the link in the description of this video by Chaos X, you will download this beautiful uh, zip file right here. All you got to do to extract it is open it up. If you have WinRAR, 7-Zip, all that stuff, there's a million tutorials across the internet on how to open zip files. Um, I have WinRAR. I've had WinRAR as long as I've been alive, basically. So... Uh, this is the one I always use. Um, all you got to do is take the file here and then drag and drop it onto your PC. That simple. Um, I already have one here because I don't want to blow your guys' ears out so when I open the games. So I went ahead and already put the thing here. In order to change save files, uh, what we want to do is open up Project 06 and you do need to launch the game at least once, I believe, for this file to appear here called save files. 
In the silver release, Chaos X did an amazing job making this super easy for you. Just click into your save files here. If you already have a save file, you'll see file one. That's going to be the file on the uh, topmost, I guess, bar of your save files, and you can have up to five. So if I want to download one of the speedrunning save files, what I'm going to do here is go down to my save file, and let's say that uh, I'm hardcore and not a lame-o like Stelmo, so I want to use the speedrunning save. What I'm going to do is just hover over this, and boom, there you go. Click on that. It's going to send you to a Google Drive here where you can download it. I promise I'm not putting any viruses on your computer. Here's a place to save your file. I'm just going to put it right here on the desktop. And bada bing, bada boom, our save file is right over here. So now that we have our save file, let's put it into Project 06. Uh, I recommend having the game closed while you're doing this because uh, some issues could be caused by, uh, by having it open. What we're going to do is literally take this save file and plop it right in here. Now, what I recommend doing, this is what I do for all my save files and what I did for the previous release, is making a copy. So just clicking the file, doing control C at the same time on your keyboard, and then control V is gonna create a copy of that save file. And I'm just going to move it into the main folder. P06 doesn't read save files from here. So I just kind of like uh, copy and pasting it right there. Just like that, get rid of the copy part. And boom, there we go. This file, uh, this save file is not uh, in the proper format in order for Project 06 to read it. So what we need to do, and I tried to make it as clear as possible, so I hope it is, is remove all of the words in parentheses. I just add the words in parentheses to denote what it is. Now, you can have up to, save fi up to five save files. You don't want to overlap and have the same save file with the same name. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this one file two. So if I click into Project 06 here, open it up, and bring her on over here, all the way onto the screen, please. When we get into the game, um, if you did it properly, regardless of which save file you downloaded, both of them have Omega as the icon. So you can go ahead and do that. This save file has infinite lives, or I guess technically 999,999 lives. If for some reason you run out of lives, that's why I suggest having a copy in your main folder. So that way, instead of having to, you know, figure out and use cheat engine to get more lives, you can just copy and paste your save file over and it'll work just fine. So now that we've got our save file taken care of, we're going to be sending, spending the rest of our time in the game itself here. So one of the things uh, that I recommend doing first is going to your options menu. I'm going to go down each of these settings and uh, we're gonna just go ahead and talk about them. So for the video settings, uh, if you are having problems, even if you're on a supercomputer like I am running Sonic Project 06, the three biggest culprits to frame drops or frame stuttering or things like that is if you go into advanced here, there is the glowing outlines, the volumetric lights, and the reflections. Those are the three biggest factors in terms of lag in Project 06. I recommend turning them all off at first, right? So we have those off, we turn those off, and we have the reflections off. And then if you have a stable frame rate there, I recommend then, you know, kind of going back and figuring out, you know, what settings work the best without having too many issues. If you don't have a supercomputer and maybe have more of a potato computer, you will basically just want to drop all these settings to low and then, you know, kind of bump each one up to see how uh, well you can get the graphics. Um, I do recommend shadows because having shadows is good. Uh, not Shadow the Hedgehog, but the actual character shadows. So that way you can kind of get a, get an idea of where the character is going to land when they fall. The final thing I want to talk about in regards to the graphics is a user named SackboyJR07 uh, left a comment on one of my videos saying that this fix worked for them. I don't entirely know. I've talked to Chaos to see if this is actually a fix that works. It might not work, but uh, it's worth a shot if you still can't get Project 06 to run really well. So basically what you do is you go to the texture quality, you turn it on low, and then you back out until you see the video settings have been saved thing in the bottom left of PO6. And then what you do is you go back into advanced and then you can set the settings however you want. 
and apparently it's gotten rid of a lot of the lag, especially in Aquatic Base for all three characters and Silver's Kingdom Valley as well. I don't know if it necessarily works for everybody, but again, it's worth a shot if you're having issues with that. Next up, we are going to take a look at the game settings. So the first four settings here, invert camera, invert camera, invert glider, is basically just up to your preference, whether you want the axes to be inverted or not when you are playing the game. In-game dialogue, all it does is, you know, whether or not the dialogue will play, it's all the dialogue that uh, does not interrupt gameplay itself. So like when Sonic is saying, I have to hurry and save Elise at the beginning, he will say that if it's, you know, on, <laughs> and he won't say that if it's off. So if you find the character, the character's annoying, you can go ahead and turn that off. In-game cutscenes, recommend you turn those off. That's like the non-progression in-game cutscenes. So cutscenes such as the beginning of Silver's Crisis City, um, the beginning of Sonic and Shadow's Crisis City, uh, the interaction between Rouge and Shadow at the beginning, or in the middle of White Acropolis, all of those uh, will be completely omitted. However, there are some, like the interaction between Silver and Sonic at the end of Sonic's Kingdom Valley, that will play no matter what, just because they're important and things would look really weird if it were not there. So for speedrunning, unless you want voluntary time loss, you should turn those off. Okay, the next one is disable camera volumes. This is a really cool feature that Chaos X added into Project 06 and is really, really useful for speedrunning if it's on. What camera volumes are, are they're basically giant event boxes that trigger a camera change. So again, if we go to the beginning of Sonic's Wave Ocean and you see as Sonic like runs down the giant, uh, the giant hill and like the camera changes to show him going through the loop and stuff like that, those are what camera volumes are. If you disable the camera volumes by turning the setting on, 99% of the time, the camera is going to be locked behind the character, regardless of what predicament they are in, whether they're going through springs or uh, have some kind of big cutscene like the Orca cutscene for Sonic, it will always be locked uh, behind the character uh, most of the time. It's similar to the in-game cutscenes where some have to be there or else it would be super disorienting and then the game just wouldn't play right um but this is a really useful feature to have on i play with them off because i find them nauseating for the audience when you have them on or when you when you disable them so i leave them on personally and all of my tutorials will feature the camera volumes on hint rings you can show or hide them just if the rings appear in stages i like to leave them on for some flavor text uh voiceover language english japanese whatever one you want Button icons, you can change to where if they look like the PlayStation icons or the Xbox icons, depending on what controller you're using. And then the miscellaneous stuff here, you can change the background video and then a couple of the like graphic things uh, for characters within the game. Audio settings, just to balance your audio. And then finally, data settings here. All you have to do uh, if you want to is you can reset your data. Uh, if you reset your data, then that save file is deleted. You can create a new save file just like that. With the multiple save system, it's not too big of a deal. This feature isn't too big of a deal, but uh, it's still really nice to have there. All right, moving on to uh, the extras menu. The extras menu, uh, the audio room is just like a theater room, but the game room has some really important stuff in it. If you're curious, if you've seen my previous videos, that the HUD that I use for Sonic Project 06, my Sonic Project 06 speedruns doesn't look like how it did in Sonic 06. That's because I went down here to the UI customization, and then there's this display here, and you can switch between E3 and Retail. Retail is technically objectively better of a HUD because in Retail, when you pass, in the Retail HUD, when you pass by checkpoints, it tells you the time you pass that checkpoint at, whereas the E3 HUD does not. I do wish it was a feature that both of them had, but alas, that's how it worked back in the E3 demo, so that's how it works here in Project 06, at least as far as I can tell. The most important setting to have in this game room is the jump dash type set to legacy. There are three different jump dash types in this game, but the one that you want to use, even if you are just starting out with Project 06 speedrunning, is Legacy. Legacy is not only the most overpowered of all the jump dash types, but what it does is it preserves your direction. 
that you're moving with Sonic and Shadow when you do a jump dash. Um, this can be seen mostly when you're running in Shadow's Crisis City, uh, because what you can do is you'll hit a spring, and then you'll jump dash while you're moving up with the spring, and the legacy jump dash will be influenced up so you can get to the rail with Shadow. So definitely, definitely, definitely have your jump dash type on legacy, but you can have all the other, other customization options to your liking. I also like using the camera type E3 because it's the farthest back one and it gives me the widest range of motion. Uh, TGS, I do not recommend it all. That puts it really, really close to the character. It is, for some reason, in the mock speed sections, it is the one that is set the farthest back. Um, but since that only affects just Sonic's story and even then, it only affects um, <laughs> it only affects four stages out of Sonic's story, it's definitely best to not use the TGS cam. Retail cam is perfectly fine as well, uh, so I recommend either the E3 the cam or the retail cam on that one uh, when it comes to speedrunning. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Uh, the next time I see you guys, I will be doing a route tutorial for Silver's Crisis City. I really hope this video was useful for you, even if you don't plan on speedrunning Project 06. Uh, I really, really hope it was useful for uh, just having knowledge um, on how to make Project 06 run better or that kind of thing. Definitely, if I left something out, leave a comment down below and I'll try to get it get to it as soon as possible. If you have any questions, I'm definitely uh, not afraid to answer them. So thank you all so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.